Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this episode, I'll be focusing on how the end products of carbohydrate digestion, namely glucose, is transported from the gut and into the bloodstream. I will discuss where this occurs, the cells that are involved, and how specific transport proteins help to facilitate this process. Let's begin with an illustration of the GI tract, and more specifically, the location of the small intestine. Let's now enlarge a section of the small intestine so we can look at the finer detail. You will see that the walls of the small intestine are made up of four layers. The serosa, or outer layer, the muscularis, the submucosa, and the mucosa. The innermost layer of the gastrointestinal tract is composed of simple epithelial cells. You will see that this layer is highly folded. These finger-like projections, termed villi, increase the surface area of the lining of the small intestine. Now, an increase in surface area allows digested foods to come into greater contact with the cells responsible for their transport into the body. Okay, let's now have a look at an individual villus. You will see that each individual villus has its own capillary network of blood vessels highlighted in red and blue, with red signifying the arterial end and blue signifying the venous end. In addition, you'll also see a central yellow finger-like structure. This represents the lacteal, which is responsible for the absorption and transport of fats within lymph vessels. Now, at the top of the villus, I have circled a number of cells that make up the epithelial layer and lining of the small intestine. These cells are known as enterocytes. Here is an illustration of such a cell. On one side of this cell, and more specifically the side that faces the inside of the small intestine, you will notice a brush-like border. This represents the microvilli, which is where absorption of food occurs. Now the space within the GI tract where food travels and is absorbed is termed the lumen, depicted here. Now on the opposite side of the brush border is where the capillaries are located. It is the job of these enterocytes to transport the end products of digestion such as glucose from the lumen of the GI tract and into the bloodstream. Let's now have a look at how this is achieved by focusing on the internal machinery that is responsible for this process. Once again, here is a labelled illustration of an enterocyte with the basal lateral surface facing the lumen while the other side, termed the apical surface, faces the blood capillaries. Now, as you are aware, glucose is the end product of carbohydrate digestion and more specifically polysaccharides. This glucose collects within the lumen of the small intestine, awaiting transport. Now this transport process requires three important steps. Step one begins on the apical side of the cell and uses primary active transport in the form of a sodium potassium pump. This process uses ATP to pump sodium out of the cell and potassium in. Over time, the concentration of sodium within the cell becomes low due to the continual removal of sodium. This low intracellular sodium concentration triggers step two, and more specifically, a sodium-dependent glucose transporter located on the basal lateral surface. Sodium moves along its diffusion gradient from the lumen of the GI tract and into the cytosol of the cell, bringing with it a glucose molecule. 
This type of transport protein is frequently referred to as a symporter as it carries two entities together in the same direction. Eventually, the glucose concentrations within the cell begin to rise above that of the surrounding tissues, and more specifically, the extracellular fluid and blood capillaries on the apical side. This brings us to the third step, which involves a third type of transport protein termed GLUT2, and works via the process of facilitated diffusion, and is located at the apical surface of the cell facing the blood capillaries. In this final step, glucose is transported out of the cell and into the bloodstream along its diffusion gradient. Once in the bloodstream, glucose is transported to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. So, in summary, the transport of glucose from the lumen of the GI tract and into the bloodstream requires three main steps, each of which requires a different transport protein. During step one, primary active transport involving a sodium-potassium pump sets the scene by creating a low concentration of sodium within the cell. Step two involves secondary active transport and more specifically a sodium glucose transporter on the other side. Sodium enters into the cell bringing with it glucose. Finally, during step three, glucose exits the cell and into the bloodstream utilizing a GLUT2 transporter and facilitated diffusion. One important thing to know about this whole process is that sodium is crucial to the transport of glucose from the GI tract and into the bloodstream. In fact, this is the reason why many electrolyte drinks have sodium, to enhance this process. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with my future presentations. <laughs>